Let me call upon the very first speaker, the keynote address given by Mr. Chandru Kalro. Please put your hands together. He represents a legacy brand that was established almost seven decades ago and continues to be one of the leading players in the category. It's a strong market's presence, and it's a testament to how brand TTK has managed to build a relatable brand story over the years, rooted in innovation and consumer centricity. Please welcome Mr. Chandru Kalro, Managing Director, TTK Prestige, on stage to share how TTK Prestige brand story has evolved over the years, and more in this keynote session will be by him. So thank you so much for being here. Please, the audience is yours. And let me also remind you, TTK Prestige has also become a $1.8 billion company, and you should give a big round of applause for that. Please, thank you. Thank you for that, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, media for having thought it fit to call me for this keynote address, and I hope it's of some use. I'm just merely going to tell our story, nothing else. And <laughs> um, can, we, can I have the clicker, please? Thanks. Yeah. yeah, so as it says, from pressure cookers to total kitchen solutions, a small snippet. Uh, the pressure cooker was invented by a Frenchman called Denis Papin. And we got the pressure cooker in 1955 by importing it from Prestige of UK. So it was a French product which we got imported from UK. And uh, we were pioneers in this category. Pressure cookers didn't exist, but I think the need was maximum in India at that point in time because we were energy starved. We were a poor country by any standard. And here was an extremely alien product that we brought to the market, which could be dangerous, which was different. And uh, we didn't have mass media advertising those days. So what we did was we spent the next three, four years, actually the next 15 years, going from village to village, town to town in a van, showing a movie on 16mm on the road, and then demonstrating this product. That is how we marketed this product, which today has 90 plus percent penetration in urban household in urban India, and over 45 percent presence in the entire country for all households. So that's, that's the story of TTK Prestige with pressure cookers. And we started manufacture in 1959. It used to be called TT Private Limited in those days, TTK Prestige. And uh, we started with uh, manufacture in uh, Old Madras Road in Bangalore, uh, what used to be next to the tin factory, and now is that factory doesn't exist anymore because Bangalore outgrew us. And uh, that is where we started manufacture in 1959. Largely, we were again short of aluminum. Aluminum was a controlled commodity, and therefore, if we could get more aluminum, we could make more pressure cookers. That is how it was. So we decided that we will largely concentrate on South. And our, uh, the second person to bring in pressure cookers was Hawkins Cookers Limited. And they were largely concentrating on the non-South. So this is how the market got polarized, aside of the fact that food habits also dictated what kind of pressure cookers people used. So. Uh, 1981, actually, I'm sorry, that's a typo. Like Naval said, uh, was the invention of the gasket release system, or GRS. That is when uh, that in innovation happened. And uh, gasket release system was an invention which was outside of what Prestige UK had done. So UK was supposed to give us all the technology at that time and all that. But this was something that we did. And uh, it actually made the cooker completely safe. That was the whole idea. And the articulation, as Naval said in his, in his uh, opening remarks, was uh, because it was also a time when the husband bought things for his wife. And therefore, in that context, he, because he was concerned about her safety, went and buy, goes and the dealer recommends that you buy something that keeps your wife completely safe if you love her a lot. And that was the articulation. I would only like to point out that here, uh, since lots of you are marketing professionals like myself, I think the agency's involvement 
is something I'd like to credit this with. Because the articulation of a safety feature, instead of just saying that this is a gasket release system, coming out the way it did, I think was the basis of the brand strength today. And I would like to credit Sadika Pirboy who came up with that idea and uh, got the brand to where it is today. Jo BBC Kare PR continued for a very long time. In 1993, that's when I joined the company, by the way. I was not existing in the company. It's 29 years since I joined the company. Uh, we launched, uh, sorry, we launched non-stick cookware. We were not pioneers. We launched non-stick cookware 25 years after Nirlep. We are today leaders in non-stick as well as pressure cookers, but we were not the first. But the difference that we brought to the table here was we didn't bring a Me Too product. We did not copy the product to give the same attributes. We brought in a different kind of vessels. We, had, we were the first to bring in pressure die cast tawas in the system. We were having a technical tie-up with DuPont in those days. And the three-coat system that we brought, which was metal spoon friendly, was a pioneering effort in making sure that non-stick cookware would last longer than what it did in those days. So that's how we launched non-stick cookware. And that year, we also launched stainless steel cookers. We were not pioneers of stainless steel pressure cookers. It's interesting that today we are leaders in stainless steel pressure cookers as well. Butterfly, which is a South-based, Chennai-based company, was the first to launch stainless steel pressure cookers. 2001, we launched, we got out of the pots and pans business. That was the turning point. We launched gas stoves and mixer grinders. Why is this important? Because there are very few companies which have made the transition from a non-electric to an electric system across the world in kitchen appliances. Somehow, that transition doesn't work in people's minds. If you're a pots and pans company, you are known for pots and pans. To get into both was the biggest marketing challenge that we had. And again, we went through the same innovation quotient kind of system that we had. So we said we will bring in small but very important differences. Each one of these came from hard customer research, which we went and understood problems and brought this out. Now, when we launched gas stoves and mixer grinders, that was the time that we actually moved out of our agency after more than 25 years to the next agency from MAA to Mudra. Now, the reason I'm stating this is because we, right through this, the agency has been an integral part of our business. And they then came up with this new tagline, which very few people know. Are you ready for a smarter kitchen? So, now we ran this line for more than 12 years. And at the end of the 10th year or 11th year, when we did a research, almost nobody knew it. It's not that we had advertised less, nobody knew it. So was it a failure of the agency, failure of the marketing team? I don't think both were true. Because what Are You Ready for a Smarter Kitchen did to TTK Prestige was to ensure that we hard-coded innovation in the product development system. Because the line was coming from making smarter, better products, irrespective of whichever category we were getting in. So unless it passed that test, we wouldn't launch the product. Unless there was a differentiation, we wouldn't launch that product. And every time we ended up with, are you ready for a smarter kitchen? Because these products were smarter. So while the line wasn't something that people understood or remembered, we started getting noticed for being innovative, being different, being something else. There was a certain subliminal thing that prestige ka hoga to better hoga. So that, I think, helped us grow at that time from a simple marketing tagline. 2003, because we wanted to develop different products, we developed our, a pressure cooker, a new pressure cooker called Prestige Smart. This was a completely different user interface, very different from whatever was in the market, and then disaster struck. The product failed. So this was an innovation that functionally did not survive the test of the Indian cooking household. And we had the biggest recall in our history of this product. It was a complete disaster. We had the biggest marketing campaign. We had a fantastic launch campaign. The product didn't do well. And we recalled. In fact, even me have gone to 
customers' homes and brought back cookers and given them their full money. The company was in such dire straits at that time in 2003 that we had a turnover of 100 crores with a borrowing of 95 crores, with unusable inventory of 25 crores, an interest bill of over 11%. We didn't know when our next salary bill was going to get paid from. And everybody thought we were going bankrupt. By the way, our share price dropped to six or seven rupees at that time, which means our market cap was a mere 66 crores. I'm saying this because somebody said we were 1.8 billion today. So that is where we stood. And the market expected us to get bankrupt any day. Prestige bandoga. That was the general refrain. And if it's from prestige hereafter, please don't buy their new products. Dealer said, if you want us to keep your product, keep it, we will pay you when we want to pay you. This was an incredible, difficult, incredibly difficult situation. And that, according to me, was a huge turning point for us. It made us, it, somewhere it hurt our pride as people who were working in the company. The culture of the company is one of a family. We were suddenly very hurt that we were being discussed in this manner in the market. And we decided that we will completely take it head on and do something that the market does not expect us to do. And what we said was, we will not give credit beyond our norms, irrespective of what happens. We will launch more new products now than ever before. And we then said we will set ourselves an incredible growth objective of 30% year on year for the next 10 years. Now, when I joined the company in 93, we were 72 crores. In 2003, we were 116 crores. So it was almost no growth. And we said from there, from this disaster, that we are going to grow by 30% year on year. Now, the interesting thing about this 30% growth story is that this objective did not come from the owners, from the promoters, from the, manage, the CEO, it came from the marketing team. The marketing team, which was used to being told that these are our products and let us make a budget for next year, now said, no, our budget is 30% plus. Now let's see how to do it. And I think I must give full credit to our then CEO, Mr. Ravi Chandran, who supported us fully to do whatever it takes to go after that growth objective. And we then, from that day till today, Year on year, we have launched between 75 and 150 new products every year. It's never been at that pace before, and it's, it is completely unprecedented in the industry. We launched exclusive franchise retail because people didn't want to give us distribution, remember? So we said we'll get our own stores there. People said you were making glorified stores, but it became a huge distribution driver for us. 2006, we launched inner lid pressure cookers, which is the Hawkins type pressure cookers. In a simple philosophy, why are we wanting to play only in half the, half the category? Who are we to decide what the customer should get? They should get what they want, and we must give them what they want. We, of course, did a differentiated inner lid pressure cooker launch. So it is, it is something that completely catapulted us from being a very South-focused company, 80% of our sales in those days used to come from the South. Today, less than 50, it comes from the South. And it make, made us a first step towards becoming a national player. 2007, we launched imported appliances. We launched the huge, uh, the Chinese-led appliances, which two years back we actually, I mean, last year we completely put a stop to. So uh, we launched this and moved to the entire kitchen. And then 2008, I think all of you know, the financial crisis hit, the Lehman Brothers crisis hit. It did not affect us so much, but definitely sentiment was very badly affected. There was a problem. Our response was very simple. We, we must do more of whatever we are doing. The brand investments only went up. They didn't come down. We didn't take a conservative view. And we said all investments must be consistent and even higher than before. Interest, in, incidentally, our brand investments in either a good year or a bad year, in percentage terms, has been no different across these years. 2013, 10 years after 2003, 
we ended up with 27% CAGR. So that is exactly what happened at the end of 2013. And in 2013, we did our next survey, which is where we realized that are you ready for a smarter kitchen is not recalled. And, uh, but we said, what is the customer doing? And then we found a very interesting insight, which was that a wife would love it if her husband would help her in the kitchen. Right, it was a very, very simple insight. And, and we said, can we use that insight to bring back Jo Bivi Se Garipyar in that context? And from since then, Jo Bivi Se Garipyar has come back. And how? So we got in Abhishek and Ashwarya to actually kickstart that uh, campaign. And uh, we were back on track. And in 2015, we started a whole new efficiency building exercise for the company. We were at 11% EBITDA at that time in 2015. We are today at 16% EBITDA, which means more than 50% increase in profitability. We have de-risked our fa factories. We don't have only one single location producing any particular product category. We have at least two. We have de-risked our channel base. We have the most wide portfolio of channel partners today. 2020, of course, we all know this, COVID hit. And then this accelerated so many things for us. 30% of our revenues were coming from China. We took an extremely emotional decision when China decided to be an aggressor in Arunachal and then in Ladakh. And we said, whatever it takes, we will move the supply chain to India and stop imports from China. And we did it. Today we make everything in India. We import a few components, but everything is in India. And what we couldn't, we dropped the line. We said, it's OK. There are others who will give it, but we will not do it. And we are very proud of this decision. It was an emotional decision, which turned out to make business sense over a period of time. I think it was a test of our character in COVID. When COVID hit in the first uh, lockdown, we made two or three uh, promises to ourselves. We will not sack a single employee. We will not cut salary of a single person. We will pay all our vendors on time during the lockdown, even if it means a huge drawdown on cash. We are, of course, debt free. We have cash in the bank. And uh, it, it helped us reinstate and re communicate and articulate the culture of the company to all our partners, to all, we call them stakeholders. And I think COVID was a great opportunity for us. Also, COVID was a great opportunity because people were spending time at home. They, were, they had no other place to go but to the kitchen because they were eating much more than they normally do. And suddenly, everyone was helping out. And we got a huge increase in our share of wallet because people were sitting at home. And we said we will build for the future. We've had huge capex capacity expansions in this period. 2022, last year, we ended up with 2,700 crores. We are an industry leader. The next player in our industry is less than half our size. The less next player is less than almost half of our profitability. We have now committed ourselves to a journey of 5,000 crores. So I'd like to end this with some highlights of what the lessons were. The first thing is that marketing should not look at being a support function in the company. Marketing must have a business approach for the company. It can lead, strategize, and actually give direction to the company if you decide to do so. And this, I think, we have proved beyond doubt. Marketing today in our company anchors product development, is the first and last point for new product ideas. And the second highlight is it's important to protect and nurture your culture and articulate your culture to all your stakeholders, protect them. It's important that people respect what, who they are working for. The year of 2003, 
is an incredible year because not only did the company and its employees come together, there is an incredible fact that we are very proud of. That was the only year in the history of our company where attrition was zero. Not a single person left the company. And I think that is because of the culture and values of the company. I think the direction that it is not the lady of the house alone who has to do the heavy lifting in the kitchen. In fact, I don't know whether you noticed, uh, cooking has no gender is a very big thought that we want to actually promote. We want to say that everyone has a role to play in the house. And this is something that we want to communicate. So that is why you now see that line, jo bivi se kare pyar, morph into other things like jo apno se kare pyar, wo presti se kaise kare inka. So these are some of the things that we are doing. Last thing is, I think, the resilience of the company. I can't call our brand timeless. That would be arrogant. But I think it's important that resilience of the people who are there in the company, the commitment to make the company resilient and sustainable is critical. And a consistency of approach. Innovation, differentiation, and value creation have been consistently followed, been followed across the years that we are speaking of. And finally, all this for creating value for every single stakeholder, whether it's the customer, whether it's the channel partner, whether it's the vendor, whether it's the shareholder. I think the value creation has to be obvious to everybody and continues to happen. Thank you very much. That was our little story. So thank you so much. I'm sure they have questions and they would love to interact, but uh, we will take it later because of the time. I'll request you to stay back a little bit for a while, sir. Chandra, sir. A while. A while on stage, please. Thank you so much. I'll request Subra Sethiji, Executive Vice President of Star Sports, please, to come on stage and hand him over the memento, please. Thank you. It can be a little more louder, the first session, the first speaker, come on, thank you. <laughs>